نستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله تعالى من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أرسله الله سبحانه وتعالى بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله ولو كره المشركون Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Qur'an, we who have believed fear Allah as he should be feared. Ya ayuhal ladhina amanu attaqu allaha haqqa tuqatih, wa la tamutunna illa wa antum muslimun. Ya ayuhal nasu attaqu rabbakum alladhi khalaqakum min nafsin wahidatin wa khalaqa minha zawjaha, wa batha minhuma rijalan kathira wa nisa'a, wa attaqu allaha alladhi tasa'aluna bihi wal arham, inna allaha kana alaykum raqiba. يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار My dear brothers and sisters all praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We praise Him, we rely on Him, we seek His forgiveness, and we ask Him to shield us against the evils of our souls, and we ask Him to cleanse us from the sins that result from our very own action. Whomsoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides, no one shall be able to misguide. And whomsoever Allah leaves astray and follows a path of misguidance, no one shall be able to guide. I testify that there is no other deity except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I testify that Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam is the final prophet and messenger of Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent him with the guidance and the religion of truth. The only religion that God created, the only true religion that is a creation of God, in order for it to dominate over all other forms of worship, even though the disbelievers hate this. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, O you who have believed, fear Allah as He is worthy of your fear. Fear God. Fear God because God is worthy of that fear. He deserves to be feared. And do not let death catch you except in a state of submission to His will, or as Muslims. Maintain a life of submission to the will of God. Maintain a life of obedience to God so that when death catches you, it catches you in a state of obedience to God, in a state of submission, in a state of Islam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also says in the Quran, O you people, fear your Lord. Fear your Lord who created you from one soul. And from that soul, He created its mate. And from both of them, he produced so many men and women. And fear Allah through whom you interact with each other. Fear Allah by whom you ask one another for things. By whom you ask one another for your rights and for your responsibilities. By God. When, you have, when somebody owes you something, you say, by God, give me what you owe me. By God, may God guide you. By Allah... You ask people, you ask one another for your things by God in the name of God. He says, fear Allah through whom you ask one another for your rights and your responsibilities and respect the rights of the next of kin. Respect the rights of the next of kin because indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon you is the ultimate observer. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also says in the Qur'an, O you who have believed, fear Allah and speak the truth. Fear Allah and speak only righteousness, so that He may reform your deeds and forgive your sins. Because whosoever obeys Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His Messenger has definitely achieved a great achievement. My dear brothers and sisters, the most truthful of all words, is the word of God. The most truthful of all words, the most truthful speech that was ever spoken is the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Quran. 
And the best guidance is the guidance of Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam because it helps us understand, interpret, and live the word of God, the Quran. And the worst matters are heresies, innovations in religion, introductions of new things that we didn't learn from the messenger or his followers because all these heresies lead to misguidance and misguidance leads to the fire of hell. Walayadu which I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to shield us all from the fire of hell. In surah number 83 in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَيْلٌ لِلْمُطَفِّفِينَ وَيْلٌ لِلْمُطَفِّفِينَ Woe is to those defrauders, the fraudsters. And it defines them after that. And it says, الَّذِينَ إِذَا اكْتَالُوا عَلَى النَّاسِ يَسْتَوْفُونَ وَإِذَا كَالُوهُمْ أَوْ وَزَنُوهُمْ يُخْسِرُونَ Who are those? Who are those mutaffifeen? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala defines them as those who, when they are buying, purchasing something, a weight of something, or a measure of something, they're asking for it to be full measure. They say to the seller, come on, put a little bit more. Add more to my weight. I'm paying money here. Give me more. But on the other hand, when it's their time to give a weight or a measure, they don't give exactly as much as they should give. They give less. And this example is an example. The similitude is in the process of buying and selling a measure of wheat, a measure of something, a drink, something. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses these measures, uses these similitudes so that we understand that, he, that He's going to question us over every little thing. Every little thing, brothers and sisters. The Prophet والسلام, was walking one day according to a hadith collected by Imam Ahmed and the Tabarani, narrated after Abu Dhar, one of the biggest companions. While they were walking, he saw two goats. He saw two goats hitting each other, fighting. Goats, two animals, fighting with each other. So the Messenger of Allah asks Abu Dhar. He says, Ya Abu Dhar, atadri ma bainahuma? He says, Oh Abu Dhar, do you know what's between these two goats? Do you know what's happening that's causing them to fight? So Abu Dhar said, no, Allah wa Rasuluhu a'lam. Allah knows and his messengers, they know best. So the messenger responded, he said, وَلَكِنَّ اللَّهَ يَدْرِي But Allah knows. And he's going to question them on the day of judgment. Allah knows. And he's going to ask them on the day of judgment. The Prophet والسلام, teaches us in this hadith, that no rights will be wasted. No responsibilities will be taken for granted. Everybody will be questioned. Usually, the motive behind why people defraud each other, the motive behind why people steal from each other, why people violate one another's rights, the motive is because they don't believe somebody's watching. They don't believe there's a day of judgment on which all the scores will be settled. That's why they don't think somebody's watching. They don't think, think somebody's going to hold them accountable to that fraud. Hold them accountable to this violation of somebody else's right. And that's why the verses after that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rhetorically asks, أَلَا يَظُنُّ أُولَٰئِكَ أَنَّهُمْ مَبْعُوثُونَ do they not think that they're going to be resurrected for a big day? On the day that they will be called upon to stand before the Lord of all the worlds. The motive behind why people violate each other's rights is because they don't think somebody's watching. If there is a camera and there is a shopkeeper and this camera is looking at the cash drawer. 
the shopkeeper will be much more careful not to steal, not to defraud the, the customer who's buying something, to give him the exact change, and not to pocket any difference. The biggest surveillance system in the world, brothers and sisters, is God Almighty. He is the biggest surveillance system in the world. He watches everything, and he hears everything, and he's going to hold everybody accountable. <clears throat> in a hadith, also collected by Imam Ahmad, narrated after Abdullah ibn Unais, radiallahu anhu, the Prophet, alayhi salatu wasalam, speaks of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment, and as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes and says, Ana al-Malik, I am the king, and at Dayan, I am the judge. And he swears, he says, no one will enter Jannah, and somebody from the fire of hell is owed something by them. And nobody will enter the fire of hell if somebody who's going to Jannah owes them something. Ya abadi, O my servants, I have made injustice forbidden for myself. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ibadi inni harramtu dhulma ala nafsi wa ja'altuhu baynakum muharrama fala tazalamu Do not violate each other's rights. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to hold us accountable. Some banks remember this. Remember these verses, وَيْلٌ لِلْمُطَفِّفِينَ When the banks, for example, the, when you deposit a check, they hold your check for a long time. They don't release that money right away and it costs you a lot of money in fees and things. But when you make a small mistake, they charge you fees right away, immediately, same time. They don't know about these verses. They don't know why you're not A wife who demands all her rights from her husband, and he and she takes even more than what she's owed in Islam. She's always demanding things from her husband. He's given her a lot more than she's asking for or she deserves. But when it comes to his rights, he comes home from work after a long, long shift, and he asks for a glass of water, and she says something mean like, I'm not your servant. She doesn't know about these verses. وَيْلٌ لِلْمُطَفِّفِينَ a wife who gives her husband everything that he deserves and more. And he puts her to work. And he's supposed to be the one taking care of her and supporting her financially. But he puts her out to work. And then he's mean to her when she doesn't do something. And he reminds her, your duty is to obey me. So he defrauds her of her rights. But then when it comes to his rights, he wants everything. He doesn't know these verses. He should remember. A neighbor who doesn't want to give his neighbor all his rights. But when his neighbor makes a mistake towards him, he files a lawsuit and breaks his, his property and drives over his lawn. He doesn't know. Wail means misery, a horrible destiny. And it can also be referring to a valley inside the fire of hell. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says these verses and he tells us the motive behind how people defraud or why people defraud one another. Why people violate each other's rights. And these verses will live until the day of judgment to remind us to always have faith in Allah. If your rights have been violated, remember, also, not just if you're the violator, if you're a victim, these verses will bring comfort to your heart. If you're a victim of fraud, if you're a victim, your, your husband or your wife or your neighbor or your Muslim brother or some other person not related to Islam, if they violate your rights, these verses should bring comfort to your heart. وَيْلٌ لِلْمُطَفِّفِينَ Remember, Allah is not oblivious. He's not unaware of what's happening. He's only delaying them to the day they rise before Him for judgment. 
as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَا تَحْسَبَنَّ اللَّهَ غَافِلًا عَمَّا يَعْمَلُ الظَّالِمُونَ Do not think that Allah is unaware or oblivious to what the transgressors are doing. He follows after that, إِنَّمَا يُؤَخِّرُهُمْ لِيَوْمٍ تَشْخَصُ فِيهِ الْأَبْصَارِ He's only delaying them until that day, the day of judgment. And the rights and the responsibilities that we have towards one another are not the rights and the responsibilities dictated by the government or by the country you live in. It's the rights and responsibilities that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us towards one another. So, for example, if it's okay in a government, that's a kind of an extreme example, if it's okay in a government or in a certain country to steal money from those who are weaker than you, you still cannot do that. Why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made theft forbidden. So it is not the rights of the resp- and the responsibilities that governments <coughs> legislate under the law. No, it is the rights and the responsibilities under God. The rights and the responsibilities under God. That's why in the beginning I, I put a little bit of stress on the verse وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ الَّذِي تَسَاءَلُونَ بِهِ Fear Allah through whom you seek your rights from one another. Fear Allah through whom you interact with each other. You ask people for what is yours and you tell them by God. By God give me what is mine. By God. Because God is the ultimate judge. Having said that, Brothers and sisters, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness for you and me and all Muslims. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله العظيم لي ولكم فاستغفروه وتوبوا إليه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم. الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على من أرسله الله رحمة للعالمين الصادق الأمين وعلى آله وأزواجه الطيبين وعلى أصحابه الغر الميامين وعلى من تبعهم بإحسان من التابعين وتابع التابعين إلى يوم الدين وارض اللهم عنا معهم أجمعين اللهم آمين All praises due to Allah سبحانه وتعالى Peace and blessings be upon the Messenger of Allah My dear brothers and sisters, this life is only a test. It's a trial. It's a trial. After that trial, after that test, comes the day of judgment. And after the day of judgment comes life either in Jannah or in hell, either in heaven or in hell. This is the message of all the prophets and messengers. This is the message of every messenger God has sent. Even though the scriptures before the Qur'an have been corrupted, but you can still see an element of truth in these scriptures. For example, um, in the book of Luke, in the Gospel according to Luke, chapter 12, for example, Jesus, peace be upon him, is quoted saying something like this, My friends, do not fear the one that can kill the body, but after the killing, he has nothing else to do. I will show you who to fear. Fear the one who has the power to cast you in the fire of hell after death. That is the one that is worthy of your fear. That's why in the Quran, every time I stand up for a Jum'ah, I, I repeat this verse. Fear Allah as he is worthy of your fear. Fear Allah because he deserves that fear, that God consciousness. To be aware that God is watching you and to have fear of Him. He is worthy of that fear. He is worthy of your heart. Because with that fear, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to direct you towards right and away from wrong. With that taqwa, with that fear, God is going to direct you towards right and away from wrong. 
But if you don't have the fear of God, if you don't think somebody's going to hold you accountable, you're free to corrupt this earth and do whatever you want. And that's the mistake that the disbelievers do. They do not want to believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because they do not want to be held accountable. They do not want to be believers because they don't want anybody to tell them, do this and don't do that. You have the right to do this, but you don't have the right to do that. That's why the disbelievers, they don't want to believe in God. Simply because they don't want the accountability that comes with believing in God. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to increase our faith in Him. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to increase our consciousness of Him. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us a lot of consciousness of Him. So much consciousness of Him. So much fear. So much taqwa that we do not ever disobey Him. <coughs> I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to empower Islam and Muslims. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to settle the scores. And for anybody who ever hurt a Muslim because of their religion, or anybody who ever violated anybody's rights, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to settle our scores and to give comfort to the victims and to give them peace. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give the evildoers what they deserve. Allahumma a'izz al-Islam wa al-Muslimin. Allahumma a'izz al-Islam wa al-Muslimin. Allahumma a'izz al-Islam wa al-Muslimin. Allahumma arzuqna. من رحمتك ومن خشيتك ما تحول ما ما تحول به بيننا وبين معصيتك ومن طاعتك ما تبلغنا به جنتك ومن اليقين ما يهون علينا مصائب الدنيا ومتعنا بأسماعنا وأبصارنا أبدا ما أحييتنا واجعله الوارث منا يا رب العالمين ربنا هب لنا من أزواجنا وذرياتنا قرة أعين واجعلنا للمتقين إماما ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار my dear brothers and sisters, uh, the mother of one member of this community, perhaps some people know him, the mother of brother Omar Khan, is very sick in the hospital. She's in intensive care. Remember her in your diet. And remember everybody, all the Muslims, everyone in the world, those that are sick, those that are in a war zone, those that are fighting for their religion, are fighting for their lives, those that are fighting for their rights, those that are fighting as victims of any violation of the rights, remember them in your dua and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make the Muslims and make Islam victorious. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Finally, inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi, ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. Oh you who have believed, ask Allah to confer his blessings upon Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu wa salam. Allahumma salli wa sallim wa zidu wa barik wa anim ala Sayyidina Muhammad. عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربة وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون إن تنصروا الله ينصركم ويثبت أقدامكم وإن ينصركم الله فلا غالب لكم فانصروا الله العظيم ينصركم واسألوه يعطيكم واشكروه يزدكم وسبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين وأقيموا الصلاة إن الصلاة تنهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر ولذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون